Yo, you are listening to Everyday Superpower, the place where we talk body language. That is non-verbal communication. We talk attraction, repulsion, human dynamics and everything in between. And today, we've got a good one, alright? So links down in the video description. One of them will link you to the catalogue of body language, which is a series of videos I've done which covers how to read people's minds through their subconscious behaviors from A to B. And secondly, there's a link to the Patreon where you'll be able to join me in watching two people, two individuals each and every time go on a date, not knowing each other beforehand, will assess whether they're attracted, whether they're repulsed through their nonverbal cues, all right? You won't learn that game nowhere else. It'll stick with you for life. So this video, or at least this concept, I thought I'd, um, you know, talk body language on this one. (laughs) I mean, it's what we tend to do, but sometimes we may uh, stray elsewhere. But I thought I'm going to cover body language that the general person tends to know, or at least the reoccurring references to body language I have come across in my day-to-day uh, from people who don't necessarily have any sort of understanding or expertise within the field or at least not that I know okay so I'm gonna try and sort of give a few examples uh, if I can remember them but first and foremost this is the most common one I've found um, ever since before delving into body language and I'm doing this video purely as if you're on this channel to learn about non-verbal communication and how to read people you're going to be picking up so so much information and you're going to be observing people's movements and you know behaviors to a point where you'll think oh wow can people see this generally you'll start to blur the lines as to what the normal person sees and you know, realistically speaking, the normal person doesn't know that much. They listen to the voice, they listen to the words, they take it for face value. A lot of people don't even understand the power of the nonverbal. So, these are three behaviours that people do know, generally speaking. First and foremost, I think this is the most reoccurring reference, or at least it was years back, uh, as far as I was concerned. Like, I'm not a participant of watching media and stuff like that no more so I don't know how much uh, reference it gets in like television and so forth but rubbing the nose itching the nose is indicative of lying okay this is one you hear because I think generally people want to catch a liar and People do itch their nose and raise their hands and scratch their nose when they are potentially lying. What happens, right? Are people people, people know this just as a generalisation. Oh, you itched your nose, you must be lying. It doesn't tend to be the case. It's not as simple as that, honestly. But what happens, right, is when you lie, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that, when you lie, your body releases chemicals, okay, that cause the tissues inside the nose to swell, alright? Increased blood flow, increased blood pressure makes the nose swell and it causes the nerve endings inside the nose to tingle, making it itchy. So, it's not so much a subconscious behaviour, it's actually a genuine itch um, that you feel like you just need to itch. So that's why it's incredibly powerful, because you will feel an itchy nose and you'll have to deal with that. And your hand will just trigger into itching your nose, even though, you know, you didn't even consider it was because you were lying. It feels like a genuine itch, because it is a genuine itch. Now, when I say I'll elaborate, I mean, it states when we lie, our body releases chemicals. That's not necessarily the case. When we are stressed our body releases those chemicals, okay? So it's not strictly down to lying, but consciously speaking, if we know that what's coming out of our mouth is a lie, we get stressed. And that's where these pacifying behaviors come into play. That's when these um, subconscious behaviors and this um, conflict 
this inner conflict comes into place because the limbal brain, the primitive brain, that's where the body language comes from. That's where the subconscious behavior comes from. These behaviors are truthful. The primate is truthful, whereas the human, the conscious mind, the neocortex, that, that's where the lying comes from. You consciously have to manufacture a lie. An action is an action, it's the truth. Words are lies, okay? So, when we're under stress, we may perform this. Now, when we're lying as well, take this into consideration. So, we're going to have a look at the, 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 the variety of different reasons as to why we see this behavior manifest. Now, I'm going to, you know, go into depth on this. I'm not necessarily going to stick with how... Um, you know, ambiguous it is just for you, the general public to say, oh yeah, when you lie, you itch your nose. I am telling you that the people are aware of this because they believe it's just purely because you're lying. So be very careful, yeah? When you think, oh, I can read body language, they can't read me. It's not necessarily the case. You know, through pop culture, through a television program or something, or through hearsay, you know what I mean? A parent saying, oh, be careful, if they itch their nose, that means they're lying, you know? It sticks with you, alright? Because you think, oh, wow. Right? When you're lying, subconsciously, in a regressive sense, your hand might come upwards towards your face to cover the mouth. Or you might actually move onwards to rub the nose or touch the nose to conceal the mouth. Okay? Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. We can put our fingers in our ears, we can cover our eyes, and we can cover our mouth. That's the subconscious trying to prevent what's coming out, or what's going in. Alright, in this case, with the hand raising towards the face and covering the mouth, through an itching of the nose, if not just the general raising of the hand towards the mouth, it's symbolic as to what they are hearing or what they are speaking they want to prevent it they want to stop it from leaving the mouth okay do you know when a little child says something stupid and then realizes goes oh, and then covers their mouth in shock it's too late but the hand raises to cover the mouth it's the same behavior just as we grow older we try to force ourselves outside of these childlike patterns we still do it but we just you know try to blur the lines a little bit so that's a little bit of talk in regards to the itchy nose the people do know about that and you know is it true is it not well the nose definitely itches when you're under stress it's not as black and white as they're itching the nose because they're lying it's because they're under stress and lying tends to bring stress okay but the pacifying behavior can manifest through so many different other means all right now moving on to the next one the crossed arms okay the people are aware of this people know about the crossed arms i don't think people understand that they shouldn't be doing it themselves though because you'll see this behavior in their day to day People will cross their arms in dissatisfaction, uh, in a defensive manner, in a protective manner, in a self-preservation manner. So people don't seem to be so clued up to the extent where they cut off this behavior on their own behalf. Me personally, I think you should do. I think this is an easy um, behavior to learn to fight against. I don't cross my arms no more. So I know it can be done. It's such a um, extra subconscious behavior to action that it would be, um, you know, it's a little easier to stop as opposed to like something minute, like the pacifying behavior of running two fingers together, you know, or um, itching your head or the back of your head or bloody blah, whatever you would consider. So a little slight. Oh, I do apologize, people. I am tired. Um, so people are aware of this behavior, the crossing of the arms. People know it's 
a portrayal of the fence. It's defensive behaviour. It's a stern reaction. It's an uncomfortable reaction. It's a borderline angry reaction. Okay, now it doesn't have to be angry and so forth. But this is how the general public perceive this. And trust me, they do understand. You see people reference this external to non-verbal communication discussions all the time. Oh, he crossed his arms when I said that. Oh, he itched his nose when he said that. And last but not least, I picked up on this one um, in the last workplace I was in. Um, they were hiring, okay? And throughout my uh, experience in this workplace, uh, this came up reoccurringly with a couple of different individuals. So, men have spoken about this one in particular. I think, well, women, women are going to be more accustomed to it because they're better at reading body language biologically all right evolutionarily they are better at reading body language but men are aware of it in a dominance perspective okay i've been with a business that's been hiring and Powerful men have walked through the door. Oh, I, I used to do security for so-and-so. I have this background in martial arts and so forth. But they wouldn't create reasonable eye contact. Which creates a lack of connection. Uh, some men... Now, don't get me wrong, there's different perspectives on this as far as, like, the normal perception of things. Some men feel that the person who's not giving them eye contact is being too good for them. Some of them think it's fearful. Okay? Men respect eye contact, whether the other man is receptive of it or not, okay? Because... Me being a man, I understand it could be quite uncomfortable making eye contact, especially with a stranger, um, for a little moment, let alone prolonged amounts of time, right? But when it comes to a position where you have to be trustworthy, appear trustworthy, and appear legitimate and realistic, it is key that you engage in some degree of consistent eye contact i mean the image i've picked up uh, off the internet that i've used in the photo before you is example of how to do a good greeting a good handshake with good eye contact okay uh it is taught around the world as to how you make a good first impression and how you create a great first engagement okay the other man doesn't need to question your sincerity or your character if you establish yourself from the get-go on this footing now don't get me wrong you don't have to engage in prolonged contact it's not a competition and what you'll find in different scenarios such as the job interview you want to make eye contact with your potential employer but you don't want to out connect um if that's the right word to use you don't want to go overboard with the eye contact in regards to making feeling them uncomfortable and potentially subordinate because that's outshining the master right and that is um, a very fatal decision you can make as far as you know becoming one with somebody who has the power to put you in position rightfully so you have to allow them to assume the dominant position you have to submit in that particular environment and that is within the eye contact realm you have to disconnect from them prior to them doing to you for the most part naturally hold on to that eye contact for too long and it will become uncomforting for someone who should feel comfortably superior 
hierarchically speaking, <laughs> hierarchically g -g 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 speaking, okay? So those are three different bits of body language that the general public do know uh, through dif differing degrees depending on where you are, what environment you're in, what society you're in, within. Def def definitely with, I'm stuttering all over the place people. I'm gonna finish this video here because uh, I'm obviously getting quite tired and um, I don't want to become too incoherent so uh, <laughs> whoa peace people I'm out